High voltage substations form an important link in the power transmission chain between the power generation source and the consumer. The reliability and the availability of the substations are decisive factors for a dependable power supply. One of the many factors which have essential influence on the switchgear design is the value of short circuit currents, or more specifically, the electromagnetic forces on conductors due to these short circuit currents. For more than 25 years, Sigre Working Group 23 has therefore been concerned with problems and solutions appearing with the effects of short circuits. Many investigations have been carried out since, whereby the analytical methods developed were always verified by detailed testing. This led to a state-of-the-art which is reflected in Sigre brochure 105 and the international standard IEC 60865. Naturally, effects of short circuit cannot be seen at normal condition of substation and, fortunately, due to the knowledge of the behavior of conductors, they are moderate if they happen accidentally. Thus, the primary aim of this film is not only to show what can happen with rigid and flexible conductors in case of short circuit, but also to point out the state of the art of advanced calculation methods. To show this, a synopsis of the tests carried out in several international test institutes will be shown. The main aim in filming each sequence was to document the physical behavior of the conductors under short circuit conditions. The quality of some scenes is low, but they still show the effects in a good manner. The types of electrical connection between the electrical equipment, which may be stressed by short circuit loads, are manifold. A look at a simple but typical Bayi structure shows the most common ones. An initial distinction may be made between rigid conductors and flexible ones. Rigid conductors in high voltage switchgear are, as a rule, made by tubes and as long as they are in a straight line, they may be calculated by IEC 60865. This is also possible with horizontal cable connections between components, or strained connections between steel structures. Advanced calculation methods are necessary if other configurations are examined e.g. vertical droppers, jumpers, or any deviation in boundary conditions of simple connection. This first test shows the effect on a bus bar made from tubular aluminium, with an outer diameter of 120 mm and a centerline distance between supports of 11.5 meters. For the first attempt, the root mean square value of short circuit current is 39 kiloamperes, with a duration of 300 milliseconds. This means that the peak short circuit current of the line-to-line -line fault is 103 kiloamperes, which causes high stresses in conjunction with high amplitudes for the displacement of the tubes. The insulators are still strong enough to keep forces and bending moments. With an increase of root mean square value of the short circuit current to 40 kiloamperes, only the breaking strength of one of the insulators is exceeded. As an example of cable connection of electrical components, a twin bundle between current transformer and circuit breaker is regarded. The span length of tested connection is 7 meters and the sag is 700 millimeters. The root mean square value of short circuit current is 55 kiloamperes, and the short circuit duration is 200 milliseconds. The first maximum of the tensile force in the cable is caused by the clashing of the subconductors, followed by another maximum due to the swing out. A third maximum occurs while the cable falls down and gets stretched once again. Many tests were performed to examine the effects of bundled conductors. 
They can cause short but very high tensile forces in the cables just at the beginning of the short circuit. The height of this force depends on whether the subconductors clash or not and, if they do clash, on the length along which the subconductors touch each other. The next test series shows impressively the behaviour of long spans, which are strained between insulator chains and supported by steel structures. The length of the span is 40 metres, and the clearance between phases is 2 metres. The root mean square value of short circuit current is 28.5 kiloamperes. In addition to the already mentioned load maxima, Short circuit proof of long spans depends more on horizontal displacement of the cable. Already with 100 milliseconds short circuit duration, maximum swing out angle is 180 degrees and produces maximum horizontal displacement. Another 40 meter span is shown in the next test. Here, the influence of feeding droppers is included. It's an important fact that portals are not as rigid as usually assumed and that their mechanical behaviour influences the tensile forces in the cables a lot. While in the last test attention was paid to the span influenced by droppers, in the next two sequences the behaviour of the droppers themselves is looked at. The kind of movements depends on the short circuit current path. First, only the span on which droppers are fixed is adapted with the short circuit current. Nevertheless, the horizontal displacement due to the kinetic impulse of the fixing is impressive. The same dropper is now adapted with short circuit current while the span carries the current to the connection point with the dropper only. The maximum displacement differs only little but the kind of movement changes a lot. The whole test series shown until now helps the development of simplified calculation methods as given in IEC standard 60865. Still, there are many connection types which deviate from boundary conditions of those test series. In this case, short circuit effects should be calculated with advanced methods e.g. the finite element method. As a typical example for calculation with advanced method, the animation shows the behaviour of a span under the condition that the span of the vicinity is adapted with short circuit current. Important for this calculation is the knowledge of eigenfrequencies and, above all, the stiffness of the gantry, since these greatly influence the dynamic behaviour. The accuracy of the calculation may be checked if tested structures are recalculated. As an example, the 40 meter span shown earlier swings back if short circuit lasts when the swing out angle has reached 180 degrees. Finite element animation shows the same movement and the measured forces are very close to calculated ones. The accuracy of calculation results is demonstrated by the next video too. The clashing of bundled cables and wave-like movement may be simulated as done here.
This was a survey of activities of the task force Effects of Short Circuit Currents within the Sigre Working Group 2303. With the results from tests and advanced calculation as shown in the extracts, simplified methods have been developed. They are published in the International Standard IEC 60865 to provide the design engineer with a brief and reliable tool to evaluate the effects of short circuit currents.